Kanto has some of the most iconic and loved Pokemon of all time. So today, I've given myself 24 hours to catch every Generation 1 Pokemon available in Scarlet and Violet in their shiny form. With over 47 targets on our list, including a required Masuda Method starter, a shiny impossible to see in the wild, and many other unexpected issues, this challenge was much harder than you might think. Alright, so here is every Pokemon who originates from the Kanto region, and we're going to be getting every single one of them shiny. Now some quick things to point out. No, we're not going to be aiming for a living dex, so evolving a Pokemon will keep its previous evolutions ticked off the list. And I'll also be giving away every shiny I find in this video to my subscribers, in a massive shiny giveaway I'm planning soon. Also, if I fail to tick them all off in 24 hours, each hour beyond that will equal one extra shiny I have to give away from my personal collection. So throw your Master Ball at that subscribe button to help me reach 100k, and let's get right into the hunt. With the pressure of a time limit constantly ticking, I wanted to start with the most time-consuming hunt planned for the challenge, the hunt for shiny Charmander. Unfortunately, the only way to get a shiny is by using the Masuda method, which I absolutely hate. Because basically all you do is stand still collecting eggs for half an hour, as your Pokemon breeds with a foreign ditto. And then once that's done, you spend what feels like years of circling around to hatch them all, and having to watch this unskippable cutscene over and over again, until you get the Pokemon to shine. But wait a minute, there was something quite special about my my first egg for the hunt. Is that a Raid Shadow Legend sponsorship? Let's go! Now before you skip ahead, please hear me out. Raid Shadow Legends is an extremely fun turn-based RPG, just like Pokemon, that can be played on almost any mobile device or PC, and I'm absolutely loving it. It's extremely addicting, and one of my favorite things about it is the auto battle feature, which means I can be both shiny hunting and clearing dungeons at the same time. This game is full of hundreds of amazingly designed champions that you can unlock and power up for your team. Some of my favorites include Sersha the Char, a crazy looking flaming tree woman, Jintoro, one of the most badass looking samurais of all time, Harvest Jack, who looks like the product of death having a child with a pumpkin, and Blood Braid because of her... Um, uh, her hair. Yeah, her hair. Also, if you start playing now, you'll be able to enter the new and exciting AR event by heading over to egghunt.plarium.com. This will be open from April 14th to May 15th, and new players who manage to find the hidden egg will be in the running for amazing rewards, from in-game items to Amazon gift cards. So what are you waiting for? Scan my QR code or click the link in the description to start your raid journey today and receive a free starter pack. Thank you so much, Raid, for the sponsor, and let's get back to the Charmander hunt. So I mentioned how much I hate the Masuda method, right? Well, there's actually one saving grace, which makes it slightly more enjoyable, and that will be finding other random shinies in the process, which due to how long this hunt for the shiny lizard was, scored us a nice handful of them, including a Tropius, Swalot, Flamigo, Krogunk, Gumi, a Krogunk whilst I was hatching an egg, another Flamigo, and a Toxicroak. Yeah, that's a lot of wild shinies, which gives you an idea of just how long this hunt was. Then, after hours and hours of searching, on the 800 146th egg, we finally came across the yellow lizard. I was so relieved this hunt was actually over because we were already 10 hours down and this was only our first required shiny for the challenge. So I evolved him into a Charmeleon and then into the iconic black and red shiny Charizard. I am so happy to have gotten this because he's still to this day one of the best looking shiny Pokemon of all time. Alright, we had no time to waste. With only 14 hours remaining, it was time to move on to our second target, who was actually a little harder than expected. Expected. Jigglypuff. Now the only thing that changes in her shiny is her eyes, going from blue to green. So unlike most other Pokemon whose entire color palette changes for the shiny and can be spotted from a mile away, Jigglypuff required me to get up close and personal to turn them around and so I could see their eyes. Luckily this outbreak could easily spawn an abundance of them and they could easily be despawned and respawned by entering and exiting Cortondo. Roughly an hour went by and we managed to find the green eyed Puffball, which is another shiny I actually really like, who we then evolved into a Wigglytuff and here's a look at how many Pokemon we still need to get, with only 13 hours remaining. Anyways, do you know what time it is? Because I think it's time for another Dunsparce Evolution Session! The iconic segment to my shiny hunting videos, where we evolve 5 shiny Dunsparce in search of the 1% chance of getting a 3 segment shiny Dunsparce, instead of the regular 2 segment. And well, I actually can't believe I'm saying this, but I think this might be the last time we're going to be doing this, because look what happened on our first attempt. 
Oh my god! That's the three segment! Let's go! We actually got it! As far as this hunt goes on the channel, this was only our ninth evolution, and we already found it. I cannot believe my luck, seeing as a three segment is literally a one in 100 occurrence. Just look at this absolute beast. I'm so thrilled we actually got him, and thanks to everyone who enjoyed this funny ritual every video. We might have to start something new next time. Anyways, let's get back to the hunting. We began searching for a shiny Mankey next because I came across an outbreak for him when date skipping. The outbreak wasn't the best at spawning many monkeys, but that problem could be solved by using a fighting type encounter and shiny boost sandwich. This isolated all of the spawns around me to only Mankey. I spent a solid hour and a half looking for the shiny, which wasn't ideal, and I was honestly really close to missing the shiny when it did spawn because of the lighting. He did not look much different than the others from a distance, but luckily we caught the green Mankey and evolved him into the very first shiny I found in Pokemon Violet, Primate. Nothing too special here, but at least his new evolution Annihilate is really cool. Moving on to a Pokemon I do really like, it was time to look for the Golden Flying Magnet. Magnemite! Like the Mankey, we were simultaneously at an outbreak and using Electric Boost to get the shiny as quickly as possible, seeing as the timer had already crossed the 12 hour mark. His shiny is absolutely amazing, and we managed to come across it within 30 minutes. So we used a perfectly matching Ultra Ball to catch it and evolved it into Magneton. We definitely need to be getting more decently quick shinies like that, and it turns out that's exactly what happened, because after spot a ghastly outbreak, I didn't even have time to knock out 60 of them for the increased shiny chances, seeing as the shiny showed up within literally 2 minutes. That's what we like to see. So after evolving him into the blue tongued haunter, I then traded him to a friend and back to evolve him into one of the absolute worst shiny Pokemon of all time, Gengar. Like what is this? Such wasted potential. At least his Mega and Gigantamax shiny were done right. Here's an update on our progress so far, and damn, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't hit the 24 hour goal because we've still got a long way to go. Alright. It was time to move on to a shiny who literally cannot be seen in the wild. Technically. Ditto! As I'm sure you're all aware, Ditto is a Pokemon who's known for transforming into and disguising as other Pokemon. And the same is true when they're out in the wild. Now most people might think the only way to find a Ditto is to go to where they spawn and encounter random Pokemon until one reveals itself upon starting the battle. However, there's actually a few ways to tell without engaging with them. Basically, every single Ditto will always be the largest size of the Pokemon it's disguised as. So the Pokemon that are obviously larger than the other is gonna be a ditto. And to proof check your size analysis, using the lock-on feature, the game will just straight up tell you if it's a ditto or not. So we made a normal type boosting sandwich and knowing how to identify a ditto, we now needed to learn how to identify a shiny. Because if you weren't aware, a shiny ditto won't be disguised as a shiny Pokemon. In my case, it would just look like a regular jumbo sized Meowth or Tandemouse. So does that mean we have to bump into every single ditto hoping it's a shiny? Luckily, no. Because the new Let's Go feature that makes your Pokemon auto battle anything you aim it at, refuses to kill a shiny Pokemon, which is honestly one of the best features in this game. So basically what that means is, we eyeball which wild Pokemon are ditto, proof check that with the lock on feature, and send our Pokemon out to auto battle. And if at any point our Pokemon refuses to attack, we've got ourselves a shiny. It'll be a pretty slow and lengthy process, but it's the quickest method by far. A little over an hour into the hunt, we came across our first shiny that wasn't a ditto. A shiny Meowth. This was actually great, seeing as Meowth is obviously a gen 1 Pokemon that we needed for the challenge, but she wasn't the only one because because the second shiny came up only 4 minutes later. I actually really like Meowth, so I was super okay with that, and one of them became a Persian. Not gonna lie, I actually really enjoyed this hunt. It was just super unique and strangely therapeutic. And then, around 30 minutes later, we came across an imposter who my Iron Valiant refused to attack. <gasps> oh my god. <gasps> she's refusing to attack. Yep, she's not attacking. That's the shiny. Oh my god, oh my god, we got it. Come on, show me that blue ditto. Oh, there's the sparkles. And wow, there we go, shiny ditto. This shiny is absolutely amazing and is one I've wanted to get for such a long time now. So we got it down to one HP. I ditched my one and only perfectly matching dive ball and luckily caught him, very nice. Next up, we were looking for the blue eyed Venonat. Thankfully, he didn't chip away too much time because after finding an outbreak of him, we managed to find the shiny bug in only 20 minutes and evolved him into Venonat. However, our next hunt wouldn't be anywhere near as quick, but it would definitely have one of the coolest outcomes I've ever seen while shiny hunting. Okay, so I wanted a shiny Magikarp, but I didn't want to do any ordinary outbreak, because the lag in water can be pretty unbearable sometimes. However, there's this tiny shallow water area right outside of Lavincia, which is significantly less laggy than other water bodies for some reason. So after failing to spend an hour hoping to get a Magikarp outbreak in that spot, I decided to just pop a water type sandwich boost. It was definitely a good call to hunt here for the reduced lag, but the downside of not being in an outbreak was the fear of getting something else shiny. Surprisingly, two hours went by with absolutely 
absolutely no luck. But then, what I feared came to reality when we came across a shiny Finizen. I really like this one, but it's definitely not what I needed at the moment. Thankfully though, the good luck soon came back, and extremely strong. Seeing as only two minutes later, I found the amazing looking metallic golden Magikarp. I've wanted this one for so long now, and it was my first time getting one in this game. But it wouldn't be the only one, because after running from the Magikarp to get a better camera angle on the shiny sparkles, look who I found in the background. A second shiny Magikarp at the exact same time. What? I've never had two shiny spawn at the same time, and it just blew my mind away. It was just so cool, and you probably won't believe this, but it won't be the only time it happens in this video. So with two shiny Magikarp caught, we evolved one into the iconic Red Gyarados, and here's another update on our progress. Only two more hours before I'm gonna have to be giving away extra shinies. And we then moved on to a hunt that wasn't so lucky. The quest for the Blue Nose Diglett. Okay, so Encounter Power Sandwiches had too much variety in what they would spawn in the East Province, so I went for the Outbreak approach. And despite it usually being a pretty quick and reliable shiny hunting method, I just couldn't find him. The shiny just refused to spawn no matter what. Not to mention they were also tiny, so I had to get decently close to them to accurately check their nose color. I went over three and a half hours with absolutely nothing, and the end of the shiny drought wasn't that rewarding either, seeing as it was a carcoal and not a diglet. Great. Another 20 minutes went by, and then we came across the shiny pre-evolution, Rolly Collie. I was sort of okay with this, seeing as I didn't have him yet and really wanted him, but come on, diglet, where are you? Then goes another 10 minutes, and no joke, a golden Varum appeared in literally the exact same spot as the other two shinies. What was going on? Clearly this outbreak wasn't the play. Now I wish I did better research before this hunt, because it turns out using ground type boosts, you can literally just isolate Diglett spawns in the cave at the beginning of the game. After 15 minutes at this new location, we finally got the blue nosed Pokemon and evolved him into Dugtrio. This challenge must love the constant up and downs, because after that grim experience came the lucky speedy hunts again. Using a single half an hour electric boost sandwich, I managed to come across the shiny mascot of Pokemon himself, Pikachu! Because they spawn all around this specific area, which was super cool, and he became a Raichu after using a Thunderstone. We then ran around exploding a bunch of Voltorb in the hunt for the nice blue version, who only made me wait three minutes to find. He then became an Electrode, and I kid you not, literally like 60 seconds after entering this Jolteon spawning area, his shiny was just as welcoming. That was three shinies within the first half of a sandwich boost, and the luck didn't stop there. I entered these ruins near the beginning of the game to hunt for Drowsy, and the pink creature spawned in just 15 minutes and evolved into Hypno. Next was Slowpoke, who I managed to find in only five minutes. Now that's crazy enough as is, but it's also insane that I didn't just totally miss the shiny, because just look how incredibly similar he is to the regular ones. We then ticked Slowbro off our list, and our insane luck finally came to a close after we managed to find a shiny Chansey near the Fairy Star Base, also in five minutes. Psyduck was up next, and we went back to the Outbreak method for this one. It was actually a really good Outbreak as well, but the shiny just didn't feel like handing himself over. A little after an hour went by, instead of getting the blue duck, we found a green mouse instead. You get the okay pass by me because you're adorable, but I want to see that duck soon, and thankfully that wish was granted in 20 minutes. And then, we now had to evolve him into a Pokemon who now gives me PTSD. <laughs> And unfortunately, we had crossed the 24 hour mark. We were now running into overtime, and every extra hour that passes is another shiny from my personal collection I gotta give to you guys. Next, I needed to get two Eevee, so I could tick her off as well as evolve into Vaporeon and Flareon. I managed to find the best outbreak possible right outside of Medali, where I could spawn a bunch of Eevee and reload the spawns by walking in and out of the town. Basically just the picnic method, but way faster, seeing as we don't need to watch the picnic cutscene over and over. We managed to come across the first white Eevee within 25 minutes, and then our second one 20 minutes later. And for whatever reason, the shiny's tail just randomly disappeared for a few frames. I don't trust this one. He's not like the others. Anyways, using a water and a fire stone, they became the two evolutions we needed to tick off the list. Next was Dratini, who was actually super easy to hunt in Scarlet by using a dragon encounter sandwich in the spot. But seeing as Violet has the Dreepy line, those Dratini spawns get completely overshadowed. So the quickest method was to just swim around Lake Casaroya and hope we get a pink Dratini instead of a shiny Dreepy or Tatsugiri. And luckily the first shiny I got was exactly who we were looking for. That allowed us to finish the Dragonite line, and we then went for the Sludge Monster Grimer. They're very easy to spawn in this spot, and upon finding the green shiny, something hilarious happened when I was trying to get some shots of it with the camera. The regular Grimer next to him was literally cross-eyed. That is not meant to happen. Like, are you good, bro? I love this game. We then evolved him into the Pokemon with a funny name spelled backwards, and only eight shinies remained. Remember how I said Magikarp wouldn't be the only double shiny we find? Well, what you're about to see still 
blows my mind away to this day. Because in the hunt for a Growlithe, not only did I get two shinies in the overworld at the same time, but it was two shiny Growlithe who spawned right next to each other. What is my luck? That is actually so insane to me. So we caught both of the fire dogs and evolved one into Arcanine. Scyther was next, but wasn't really much of an issue due to the isolation method. And then it was time for what I wasn't looking forward to, Haldean Tauros. His shiny is awfully hard to spot compared to others. And although I already had one and have a pretty good idea on what to look out for in the shiny, it was still quite a challenge. I had to keep my eyes glued to the screen at all times to not miss the subtle change, whilst also having to deal with their annoying aggressive behavior, seeing as they'll charge at you if you stay near them long enough. Not to mention, I'm still digging into my personal shinies, seeing as we're still in overtime. But luckily, even though it was in the shade and even harder to miss than it would be in sunlight, I managed to identify the shiny amongst the others, which was such a relief. Then it was time for our final hunt for the challenge, the hunt for Shelter. I managed to find a good outbreak to spawn him, but the shiny just didn't want to show up either. After nearly two hours of searching, I was only just able to spot a shiny Watchroll, literally because he came close to the camera for like a few frames. I couldn't have been closer to totally missing him, but he wasn't who I wanted, sadly. Fast forward 30 minutes and we found a shiny love disc. This is one of my favorite shinies of all time, so no complaints there. And then we finally found the last wild shiny we needed. This one is so good, and to finish off the challenge, we evolved him into Cloyster. And that meant we had now gotten every single shiny Pokemon from the Kanto region available in Scarlet and Violet. It took us a total of 32 hours, which means I'll be giving away not only every shiny I found in this video, but an extra eight of my shinies on top of that to you guys. So make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for this mega shiny giveaway I'm planning soon. Anyways, I really enjoyed this challenge. I hope you all enjoyed and thank you all so much for watching.